If you've been a technician for any length of time, you've learned that the more you know about a system or a component, the easier it is to troubleshoot and fix. This is especially true of a motorcycle's electrical system. All those wires and black boxes may seem a little confusing at first, but if you understand how electricity works, you'll be able to understand how a motorcycle electrical system works. And more importantly, you'll be able to quickly find the problem when something in the system isn't working. We've all heard the terms voltage, current, resistance, and circuit. Understanding what these few simple terms mean and their relationship with one another is really the foundation of quick and effective electrical troubleshooting. When you know how voltage, resistance, and current are supposed to act in a circuit, well, it's easy to measure and determine if that's what's actually happening. And if you don't get the measurements you know you should, well, you've found the problem. That's what we'll be looking at in this program. Now, if you haven't already seen it, I urge you to watch the full cycle video entitled Electrical Principles before you watch the rest of this program. The Electrical Principles program provides an excellent background on electricity that we're going to add to right now. After watching this program, you will be able to describe the elements of electricity, understand terms such as voltage, current, and resistance, identify the individual parts of a basic electrical circuit, and describe how voltage, current, and resistance act in a circuit. But first, let's get started with the basics. You're going to hear three common terms used in the study of electricity. Voltage, current, and resistance. They're a good place to start because you can tell what's happening in an electrical system by measuring them. Let's take a look at voltage and current first. Current is simply the flow of electrons and it is measured in amperes or amps. We use the terms current and amperage interchangeably. Amperage or amps is the unit of measure for electrical current flow. Voltage is the electromotive force or push which makes the current flow. We measure voltage in volts. Together, current and voltage create electrical power or wattage. This is measured in watts. There are two important facts you need to remember about voltage and current. You can have voltage in a circuit without current, but you can't have current without voltage. You need both voltage and current to create or consume electrical power. Now, let's discuss resistance. Resistance does just what it sounds like. It opposes the flow of current. We measure it in ohms. To explain more about how voltage, current, and resistance work, we need a circuit, which is nothing more than a simple, unbroken loop. Here is a basic electrical circuit with a few common components. First, we have a power source, the battery. Next is a fuse to protect the circuit from too much current flow. Then we have a switch, which controls the circuit. Next is the load. Here we're using a light bulb, but it can be anything that requires electricity to work, such as the headlight, horn, starter motor, whatever. All loads have resistance. Usually a circuit has only one load per branch. Then we need a ground to the motorcycle's chassis, which is the link between the load and the negative terminal of the battery. Finally, there is the circuit wiring, which links all of these components together and carries the current flow. Now, remember, I said that a circuit is simply a continuous loop. With a switch open, our loop is no longer complete. Current will not flow. 
so there's no power for the light. Close the switch and the circuit is complete. Current flows from the battery through the fuse and the switch to the light through the ground and back to the battery. The current flow will cause the light to glow. For the load to work, current must flow. And current only flows when there is voltage pushing it and a complete circuit for it to follow. It's that simple. Now, let's see how voltage, amperage, and resistance act in the circuit we just built. You'll notice that we've replaced the battery and ground with the symbols used in the wiring schematic. Voltage, the force that pushes the current, is used up or drops in the working circuit. So the voltmeter reading here by the battery will be different than here, past the load. That's because the voltage was used up by the load. But amperage, that is, the flow of electricity, remains the same in all parts of a single branch circuit, like this one. So, if I measure the amps here, here, or here, the reading will be the same. How can that be? Remember, current flows in a circle from the power source through the circuit, and back again. There may be a lot of amperage, or just a little, depending on the load. But whatever affects the current flow in one spot will affect the entire circuit. Also, if I have a circuit with more than one branch, like this, The amperage could actually be different in each branch, depending on each branch's load. Now, why does a load affect voltage and current? If you guessed that a load has resistance, you're right. Remember, resistance opposes the flow of electrical current. It can be any number of things, either intentional, like a load, or unintentional, like a corroded connector, bad ground, or bad component. Resistance will use up voltage and reduce current flow throughout the circuit. If you're an experienced technician, I'm sure you know that excessive or unwanted resistance is the major cause of electrical problems. If the resistance is increased, less current will flow. And with less current flow, the load, such as lights or the horn, will not work properly. Okay, we've built a basic circuit and talked about how voltage, current, and resistance affect each other in that circuit. This relationship between current flow and resistance is a very important one, but to troubleshoot electrical circuits effectively, we need to look at the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance, and how they affect one another in a circuit. So, let's take another look at our basic circuit. As before, we have a battery, fuse, switch, light, ground, and of course, the wiring. Close the switch and the bulb lights as it should. This process is explained by Ohm's law, which says that in a circuit, one volt will push one amp through one ohm of resistance. Ohm's law is written like this. Now what does that really mean? It means that when voltage is steady, as in the motorcycle's electrical system, if the resistance increases, the current will decrease. It's important to understand that with steady voltage at the battery, any increase in resistance, such as a corroded connector, will result in a decrease in current. The greater the increase in resistance, the greater the decrease in current, and the dimmer the light. It's that simple. What does Ohm's law say about the effects of resistance on voltage? 
Let's take a look at our basic circuit again. We have 12 volts at the battery and 12 volts going to the light. After the light, there is no voltage. It's all used up across the bulb. This is called voltage drop. The voltage is lost as it goes through the load or the resistance. Now, let's check for current and voltage. First, we'll hook up an ammeter to measure current flow. You can see that the current flow is the same in all parts of the circuit. Let's insert an additional resistance and see how it affects the current flow in the circuit. We can add the resistance anywhere in the circuit and it has the same effect. As you can see, when we add the resistance, amperage drops and the bulb dims. Remove the extra resistance, the current flow goes up and the bulb burns brightly again. So it's clear that resistance has a direct effect on current. Now, let's add that same resistance and see how it affects voltage. There are still 12 volts at the battery and before the bulb. But after the bulb, the voltage is 4 volts. The bulb is using only 8 volts, not the full 12 as it should. If the voltage reading after the bulb is 4 and the voltage after the resistance is 0, then the added resistance is dropping the other 4 volts. So what does this tell us? Two things. First, in a circuit with more than one resistance, only part of the voltage is used up or dropped across each resistance. Second, all of the voltage is used up before it gets to ground. Now, don't confuse voltage drop with voltage stop. We get voltage stop when the circuit is open or incomplete. This could be from an open switch or a broken wire or a failed component. Voltage drop only takes place and can only be measured when the circuit is complete and current is flowing. So, if you're trying to find a problem in a circuit and you measure the voltage on each side of the load and it doesn't equal the source voltage before the load and zero after, there must be some unwanted resistance in the circuit. Since all of the voltage in a circuit gets used up, the voltage reading should always be about zero at ground. If it's not, you have a bad ground or some resistance on the ground side of the load. Understanding voltage drop and this relationship between voltage and current and resistance are the keys to quick and accurate electrical troubleshooting. So let's review. First, we described the three elements of electricity. We said voltage is the force that pushes the current through the circuit. Current, or amperage, is the flow of electricity. And together, voltage times amperage equals electrical power, or wattage. Resistance is the force that opposes the flow of current, and current can only flow in a complete circuit. Then we learned the basic components of an electrical circuit. And found that when measured, the amperage is the same in all parts of that one branch circuit. We also found that voltage drops when it encounters resistance. And most importantly, we've seen how voltage, amperage, and resistance affect one another. This relationship is explained by Ohm's law, which says simply that voltage is equal to the amperage times the resistance. In everyday situations, Ohm's law tells you that when the voltage is steady, increasing the resistance will decrease the amperage, and decreasing the resistance will increase the amperage, 
again when the voltage is steady. When resistance is steady, a decrease in voltage will result in a decrease in amperage. Likewise, an increase in voltage will result in an increase in amperage, as long as the resistance is steady. Knowing how voltage, amperage, and resistance interact will help you quickly and accurately pinpoint electrical faults. For more information on everything you've just seen in this program, be sure to refer to your resource guide. It's a great reference to help you learn about electrical systems and earn more money.